What is up, y'all? It is your boy Winston Wolf. I'm back. I just want to do a quick review before I head off to work. And we're having a blizzard tonight, so that's going to be fun driving on the highway. Barbarian. You've already seen this movie. It's about, what, two months, this review, two months too late, whatever. You don't watch my reviews for production value or tidbits or editing or any of that stuff. You do it because we're cool and you like whatever I'm rambling about, and I appreciate that. But Barbarian... Number one, it's set in Detroit. Number two, and I actually did a number two because usually I say number one like six times throughout the video. So I actually had a, a second point, a number two. So this is historic. So mark this right here. But number two, they filmed it in one of those abandoned Detroit neighborhoods with all the boarded up, just bombed out houses and stuff. You could have just filmed it there. And had a much scarier environment. Because that, it just looks like a nice neighborhood, an abandoned neighborhood that's just boarded up. And, and barbarian, if you've seen this movie. If you haven't, I'm just rambling. Um, but it's in no way captures the fear of what those neighborhoods are really like. Go on YouTube, there's several videos of like urban explorers and people like that. Or people just driving through there because they're smart enough to not get out of the car and film. And even watching the videos, you'll be like, yeah, that's a real life haunted house. That's that neighborhood looks terrifying. And guess what it is? If you've ever just taken a run. I remember one time me and some of my friends, um, Thurston, I believe we were talking about not too long ago. We took a wrong turn and we got near some of those neighborhoods, not full blown in those neighborhoods. Pause. I don't know if that's pause worthy, but I'm just going to say. But just even around those areas, there's a whole vibe where you're just like, let's get out of here. So they should have filmed it in that those real areas. They could have just hired security. And I mean armed security. But they could have hired some security and really got that movie authentic. You couldn't, you didn't even have to have the mother character and you could have just filmed it. And you'd have been like, man, that's a scary ass movie. And be like, well, you know, what was the creature? It's like nothing. They just went through some old Detroit neighborhoods. It, it's real. It's real. It, there's no, you'll hear people say, oh, these neighborhoods are bad. Don't go here. And then you go through, you're like, this ain't Detroit. Um, also, the, the, the mother character in there, you could have just got some women from Detroit or from Michigan. You didn't have to put any prosthetics on a man and you could have had something far scarier than what was on the screen. Michigan isn't known for its beautiful ladies. Sorry if I hurt any women's feelings out there, but eh, cold hard fact. You know what I'm saying? We live in a cold, miserable, nothing happening state. As much as people in Michigan want to be like, it's a water winter wonderland and all this garbage. There's nothing going on here. Nobody comes here for, you know, for any kind of vacation. Don't fool yourself. If you're one of these Michiganders that are a proud Michigander, you are a proud moron, okay? But you could have just got picked any broad off of the street because when you see an attractive woman in Michigan, it's like spotting a unicorn, seriously. We're, we're hurting over here, over, over in the mitten. Um, Justin Long, though, straight up steals the movie. Justin Long, whenever I see him, he reminds me of if Ryan Reynolds didn't give in to the Hollywood system, what he would have became. It's like both of them were in waiting together, and then one of them was like, they, they got at that crossroads together, and one of them was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to go the Hollywood route. I'm going to do whatever I have to do. I'm going to do whatever garbage movies I have to do to get there. And Justin Long was like, nah. I'm, and Ryan Reynolds went this way. Justin Long went that way. And Ryan Reynolds was just like, I, you know, I'll just do what I have to do. Justin Long was like, no, nah, I, I, I make enough money. I make enough money to where I can do projects that I actually want to do. Maybe do something that's not too good that I know isn't going to be good ahead of time. You know, you know, just to get a nice little check to cruise off of so I can do other projects that I actually want to do. But whenever I see Justin Long, that's that's what I think is that they have two parallel careers up to a certain point. And one just stayed kind of true to himself and the other one. Went, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I love Van Wilder. I love Deadpool. I can't think of anything else I like Ryan Reynolds in. Any, anything that's notable. I'm sure somebody would be like, well, well, what about... But but if I can't name it right off the top of my head, I don't love it. Justin Long, come on. Idiocracy, Waiting, uh, even the Walrus movie. Um, the, the Die Hard movie he's in. That was the last bearable Die Hard movie. Justin Long just raises every project he's in. 
just that much higher just because of who he is. And it's a shame he never got his flowers. Maybe maybe like Tarantino or somebody will like that. Somebody like that, you know, a director like that will be like, man, you know, this guy never got his props. Let me put Justin Long in something. Um, But uh, if you like this movie, though, Barbarian, there's a movie from the early 80s that used to freak me out as a kid. It's called The Unseen. For years, I, I couldn't even find the name of it. But, you know, as the Internet grew and people started you started having websites that were strictly dedicated and like reddit threads to like there was this movie when i was a kid and there was a guy in the basement that had a rusty spoon that was chased it would just be something super vague and like five people would be like it's this movie 1982 180 minutes long you know what i'm saying so after years i finally found the movie it's called the unseen it was either 82 or 84 i can't remember just look it up but it has like a similar premise and I don't know if maybe watching the clips or watching the movie now, just how desensitized everybody is, because for years we've been watching, you know, uh, Taliban beheadings and, and stuff like that on the Internet. But as a kid, that movie freaked me out. And when I saw this movie and I started seeing where it was going, I immediately thought of The Unseen. So check out The Unseen if you like this movie. Just put in um, the unseen '80s movie, and and it'll it'll pop up, and you'll be able to tell just by like the the movie poster. There's like a girl like on like a floor heating vent, so, like sticking her hands through trying to escape. So very similar, very similar. Um, this movie zero to ten dog bones. Zero is garbage. Ten is good. I give it a good eight. It was watchable. You know, in today's day and age, especially how a lot of these horror movies, they just think they can get away with just shooting stuff in night vision and just, you know, tying a string to a door and having it close or, you know, getting so, getting some girl and be like, oh, well, she needs an exorcism. So we'll just put pale makeup on her and have her talk in, you know, a creepy voice for the last, what, 12, 15 years horror. And, and I, I put that in air quotes. Because that's how terrible it is. Horror has just it's reached a lazy, lazy area. It's either been that or it's been, hey, let's take a Japanese movie. Let's get a little girl. Let's dye her hair black. Let's get it completely wet. Comb it down. Put some white makeup on her, some black makeup around her eyes and have her just standing there. Like, stop it. Stop it. So I think, you know, this is a good sign where people, they actually want real horror. You know what I'm saying? They don't want... Oh, it's what you don't see. I remember I had a friend that was just gushing, pause, over um, the Blair Witch Project back in the day. And I remember, like, he just, like, forced us to go see it. And I remember, like, afterwards, I was like, so what? It was a guy standing in the corner taking a leak? What What was the end all about? He's like, see, it's, it's, it's what you don't see. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that's what great filming is. It's what's not on the screen. Yeah, that's... No, I like that they're going back to a lot of movies are practical effects, you know, and an actual villain, you know, not some spirit that just jumps body to body or, you know, snatches the blankets off you when you're sleeping. No, I want an actual creature. You know what I'm saying? I want to fa I want to see the face. I want to see the creature. Chase. You know what I'm saying? I want something tangible. I don't I don't want all this cop out filmmaking, you know, just because they want to save a couple bucks. If you want to save a couple bucks, be creative with what you're doing. Go back and look at John Carpenter, George Lucas, all these people back in the day that had to invent ways to get their vision across. And 99% of the time, it was them going to some hobby shop and buying in, you know what I'm saying? Creating something out of nothing. So I like this style of filmmaking. I, I give it an eight. It wasn't, you know, a totally perfect movie to me, but... Again, I like that this is a sign to where horror is going, and hopefully it gets much more gruesome, extreme, and worse, and creative, creative, creative.